Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Gladys Sanchez and I am the WIOA Title I Youth Career Advisor um, with the uh, Career Center here in Pender County, the NC Works Career Center. Um, welcome to the last presentation of our three-part series of what you need to know for college. Um, and our last presentation is going to cover other ways to pay for college. Um, this presentation will cover um, scholarships, grants, loans, the WIOA Title I Youth Program here in the Cape Fear region. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started. So um, in our previous presentation, we had talked about FAFSA, and now we're going to talk about other ways to pay for college that, are, that don't include the FAFSA. If you are interested in learning about the FAFSA, feel free to um, contact Shannon Kidney at Pinner County Library to um, access those recordings. Um, so we'll go ahead and jump in. Um, scholarships. So scholarships are a type of financial aid. Um, and a lot of people kind of already know what scholarships are, but I think that there's a lot of um, information out on scholarships that it can become overwhelming. Um, but you want to make sure that you're applying to as many scholarships as possible to secure um, funds for your school. And I think a lot of people also have the misconception that scholarships are only meant for high school seniors, maybe some high school juniors, and that after you graduate from high school, there's really no other opportunities to get scholarships um, because they're not as readily available as they were in high school. But there are many, many search um, engines online that you can go to and find scholarships that are for college students, untraditional students, um, and just for people who are not necessarily in high school. So it's definitely important to check these out. And I actually included some websites that are great for finding scholarships that um, you will be able to meet the eligibility requirements for. Um, something really important about scholarships is you want to read the eligibility requirements and you want to read the instructions very carefully. Um, and another really important thing to know is if you are applying for a scholarship and you receive that scholarship, it is important that you report that um, scholarship to your college. Um, this is important because sometimes the colleges will, um, at the end of the day, that money is going to go to the college and the college will know that you received that scholarship. And so you need to make sure that you just go ahead and let them know from the beginning so they can continue to um, adjust your financial aid package as needed. Um, so when I say that this may affect your financial aid package, some colleges will add scholarships on top of your bill. Um, therefore reducing the debt that you have with the college, but some colleges will not. Um, some colleges will actually take away aid um, because you received an additional scholarship. So check with your college on their methods of receiving scholarships so you know if applying to scholarships will be beneficial to you. Um, and so where are some places that you can find scholarships? Um, the main one that we have um, here in North Carolina that's honestly the best, I, I will say one of the best search engines is the College Foundation of North Carolina. CFNC.org. Um, if you're a North Carolina high school student, um, you probably already have an account, or if you graduated from a North Carolina high school, you also probably already have an account. So you want to go in and find your username or reset your password if you don't remember. But the College Foundation of North Carolina, a lot of the scholarships are meant for college students, people who are already in college, people who've graduated high school and are wanting to go to college after taking a few years off. And so the College Foundation of North Carolina is great for those untraditional students. Um, you want to actually check out the college's website. So if you're thinking of going to Cape Fear Community College, go to their financial aid website. Look um, in the search bar and type in scholarships. They actually have school scholarships that you can apply to separately from your college application. So you want to check out college, um, the Cape Fear Community College's website um, under financial aid. You want to check out, you know, UNCW's financial aid website, any college that you're applying to go to their financial aid website because sometimes there are applica applications there for separate scholarships that you can apply to. Um, there's Career One Stop, Fast Web, Student Scholarships, Big Future, College Net, Peterson's, CapEx, and Scholarship Monkey. These are all extra additional search engines that you can use to apply to scholarships. Um, one important thing to note is that there are plenty, there are many, many scholarships and they're all about different things. Some of them care about your grades, some of them care about your volunteer experience, work experience, um, and just classes that you've taken at the high school level. Um, and a lot of it may seem overwhelming when they ask you for an essay, but um, typically you can reuse your essays for multiple applications. So if you wrote, um, an essay on 
what are your strengths? Um, most of the time you can reuse that essay for other scholarship applications that may ask a very similar question. So I know that it can seem overwhelming to look at all the different essay questions, but just reuse your own essays, you know, add in a few sentences or take away depending on the word, um, word count that's required. Um, but it's very easy to reuse your essays after you write one or two of them. Um, so don't feel overwhelmed by scholarships. Most of the time they're really um, easy to fill out and you can reuse those essays. Um, so now we're gonna talk about loans. Loans are also another way to pay for college. Um, the Stafford loans um, are what we call federal student loans. And um, we touched on this just a bit in our last presentation with the FAFSA. Um, you qualify for loans, federal loans through the FAFSA. That's the only way you can qualify through, through federal student loans. Um, but there are different types of loans. So when you submit your FAFSA, you can see which loans you qualify for at the very end when you submit. Um, subsidized loans are um, the, the better loans. Um, and that's because they do not accrue interest while you're in school. And they also don't accrue interest in the, in the six months post-graduation. Um, and so what that means is if I take out $1,000 in a subsidized loan, I will owe $1,000 um, the day I graduate. It won't accrue interest while I'm in school. That's why it's a better loan. Um, the subsidized loan though is based on financial need. Um, so let's say you qualified for um, a tiny Pell Grant um, and so they decide to give you a subsidized loan. Um, it is based on financial need. It's based on the information that you submit on the FAFSA. The unsubsidized loan um, is pretty much given to everybody that applies to the FAFSA. Um, and this is the, I guess, the not so good loan um, because it does accrue interest while you're in school. And so what this means is if I take out a $1,000 unsubsidized loan at the beginning of college, I may owe around $1,100 after I graduate college. And so this is why um, it's better to take out the subsidized loan if you're given the option. Um, instead of the unsubsidized loan. At the end, loans are really a last resort option um, when applying to school. You really wanna take advantage of scholarships. You want to apply to the FAFSA and see if you qualify for the Pell Grant. You wanna look for scholarships on the college's website because loans should be the very, very last resort. Um, no one wants to go into debt. And um, so it's really, you wanna look into scholarships. Um, like I said, scholarships can seem overwhelming because of all the different applications, but free money <laughs> can be worth it, um, especially when you know that you don't necessarily qualify for much else. Um, I do wanna talk about two other types of loans that are not federal student loans. One of them is called the Parent PLUS loan. Um, and you can also obtain this through the federal um, student ed website, which is, I guess, FAFSA as well. Um, and you can go on there and research the Parent PLUS loan on there. Um, and you can borrow um, as much as needed to make up your cost of attendance. Your Parent PLUS loan means that your parent um, is at, um, will have to pay the loan if for some reason you default. Um, but basically your parent is co-signing on this loan. Um, and your private loans, so your private loans you can obtain through um, private entities such as your bank. Um, it's actually really nice to go and talk to your bank and see what options you have as a student in terms of obtaining a private loan um, because sometimes private loans can have better interest rates than a federal student loan or a parent plus loan. Um, and so you know, if you don't qualify for the Pell Grant and you didn't really obtain any scholarships, you want to look into also talking to your bank and seeing if there's any opportunity for you to get um, a student loan, but at a much better interest rate. And so those are the type of loans um, that are available to you as a student. Um, Stafford loans, um, Parent PLUS loans, and private loans. Um, and now we're going to jump into another way you can pay for college. And this is a WIOA Title I Youth Program. Um, the WIOA Title I Youth Program is a program that's really um, um, available to pretty much anyone in the state of North Carolina. 
Um, the WIOA Title I Youth Program is a federal program um, that is funded through federal dollars. And this is a program, a year-round program that gives young adults an opportunity to gain job experience, educational, and hands-on training. Um, the goal is to prepare individuals for the workforce as well as help them find lifelong careers. And so who does the WIOA Title I Youth Program serve? It serves individuals between the ages of 16 and 24 um, who meet certain eligibility requirements that live in Pender, New Hanover, and Brunswick County. If you don't live in these counties, that's okay. There's, this program exists throughout the state of North Carolina as well as through the country um, because it is a federal program. Um, if you are older than 24 years of age, um, you can be assisted by the WIOA adult program um, in the same counties for the same services. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit more about what we fund and what we can help you with um, if you are trying to go back to school and you see that you perhaps may not, you may need more financial assistance to be able to go to school. So um, the money is first come first serve because it is federal money. Um, so the sooner you enroll in our program, the sooner um, we can see if we have funds available to assist you in your educational and employment goals. The educational programs that we fund are programs that are approved on our eligible training providers list. Um, and so a lot of the schools that are in our local area are on this list. So Cape Fear Community College, UNCW, Brunswick Community College, James Sprunt Community College, and many others. Um, and so if you're looking to go to school for a two-year degree and later, later transfer to a four-year school, um, this is one of the programs that we can assist you with. If you're interested in Nurse Aid One and becoming a CNA, um, becoming, um, going to the truck driver training program and obtaining your CDL, obtaining welding certificates, um, and just short term um, training programs. Those are programs that we can help fund through our program. And not only can we help um, pay for tuition fees and books, we can also help pay for supportive services. And so supportive services is something I'm going to touch on in just a bit. Um, the next thing we also help fund with our program is employment training programs. Um, and so these are called the work experience program and the on the job training program. And these two programs help um, these individuals in our program gain work experience, as well as um, have gain permanent employment in a field of their interest. Um, so for example, if um, currently we have participants who are interested in um, becoming an office assistant. Um, and so we've placed them with employers in our local area to help them gain work skills. Um, soft skills such as customer service, um, project management, um, and many others. And so these programs are funded through our, um, through the WIOA Title I Youth Program, while the employer gets to have um, an extra set of hands on their site. Um, and then supportive services are um, things that we also fund to help you participate in educational and employment programs. And so many times we see that um, we have a lot of people who perhaps need to pay for childcare or transportation in order to go to school or in order to go to work. Um, and so those are supportive services that we can also help fund, whether it be um, transportation, childcare costs, toolkits for work, work clothes, um, and a lot of other things that we can help fund as well. And so with the WIOA Title I Youth Program, um, like I said, is available in a, in a lot of places across the state. And if you reach out to the WIOA Title I Career Center, or to the career advisors, you may be, um, may be eligible for this financial assistance. So um, we've covered um, a lot of ways to pay for college, from the FAFSA to scholarships to loans, as well as through um, programs such as the WIOA Title I Youth Program. Like I mentioned earlier, if you are not um, 16 to 24 and you're older than 24 years of age, we can assist you through the WIOA Title I adult officers in your county. Um, and feel free, my name is, um, and actually next slide is my contact. So um, my name is Gladys Sanchez and I am the WIOA Title I Youth Career Advisor. My email is on the screen, my phone number, um, our Facebook and Instagram, um, and our NC Works Career Center, which is 904 S Walker Street, Burgaw. Um, our offices are currently closed due to COVID-19, and we are hoping to reopen in March. Um, but in the meantime, you feel free to contact me um, at my phone number or my email. Um, okay, and actually, the last slide is questions. So I'm going to...
in now who has a couple of questions. Yeah, so I just had a couple questions that I wanted to clarify for anybody who's watching. Um, why is it important to report a scholarship and who do you need to contact to find out how a scholarship will uh, affect financial aid? Yes, so um, unfortunately there are certain colleges who um, will adjust your financial aid package um, because you received a scholarship. And so, for example, UNC Chapel Hill is one of them. Um, if I obtain a $1,000 scholarship from my local Rotary um, here in Burgall, and I report that to the financial aid office at um, UNC Chapel Hill, whether I report it or not, they're gonna find out because the money's going to go to them. Um, they are going to actually take away um, grant money that they've offered me already because they're going to replace my scholarship with that money. So many times um, it, it may be, it can seem, um, I guess, sometimes it may not be worth it to apply to a certain scholarship if you know that your college isn't going to accept it the way you wanted it for them to accept it. So let's say I owe $2,000 to UNC Chapel Hill. Um, Instead of that $1,000 being added to my, my bill um, to reduce those $2,000, it's just only going to replace um, an, another financial aid thing that I already received from UNC Chapel Hill. So, and it's kind of hard to explain. You wanna check with your colleges, wherever you apply and wherever you get into, ask them, how do you process scholarships? Do you add them on to my financial aid package that you've already given me? Or do you use that money to replace it with another grant that you've already given me? Um, because unfortunately, like I said, some colleges will do that. Other colleges won't. Um, so that's why it's important to ask. For example, Cape Fear Community College may not do that. Let's say I owe $1,000 to Cape Fear Community College and I receive this scholarship. They're gonna be, okay, great. You're debt free, you don't owe us anything else. Um, and so you want to check in with your financial aid office at the college that you're applying to or being accepted to. Um, they're going to be able to give you that answer um, and let you know how scholarships are being processed and how they affect your financial aid package. Because you want to make sure that you're applying, that your efforts in applying to scholarships are being, um, that are going to be for your benefit when you go to college. So it might be best to check in on that before you start your application. Yes, definitely. Okay. And I have a question about the Parent PLUS loan. Is the Parent PLUS loan considered a federal loan? Do you apply for it the same way you would apply for a federal subsidized or unsubsidized loan? Or yeah. is it separate? Yes, it is. So um, if you go onto the um, FAFSA website and you look at the loans that are available, Parent PLUS loan will be one of them and you will be able to apply for that um, through their website. Okay, awesome. And then my last questions are actually about the WIOA Title I youth program. What counties did you say were part of that program? So here in the Cape Fear region, we serve New Hanover, Pender, and Brunswick. Hey. Okay. And what is considered a short-term training program? Um, a short-term training program can be programs like welding, um, the CDL program, um, the CNA course. Uh, and so those are some that we fund. I know some people have asked in the past too, what are some programs that um, we don't fund? And so one of those is... Um, like cosmetology, we don't fund that. And so they have to be on our approved eligible training providers list. Um, but yeah, short-term programs like CDL literally can take you two months, eight weeks. CNA can take you about eight weeks. Um, welding is a short-term program as well. Diesel mechanics, HVAC, um, and there's many others just like that. If you want to earn your certification, they're very short-term programs that can honestly really give you a great salary starting out. Okay, awesome, thank you. Yeah, of course.